Now, what about when it comes to design interface and the design cycle? All right, we start off by talking to people, right? We want to know what it is their, need, their needs are. That's how we come up with new features and new products. Great idea. Very important. Who knows what typically happens after that? In a lot of cases. Not all. Let me go. We talk to our users. And then what do we do? We collect the data. Um, and then you start testing you know, the, the, the feedback that you get from your users. It's not something that you can implement on the device with product. Hopefully you do that. Hopefully, you actually continuously talk to your users, collect data from them, have them actually involved in the design process from the very beginning. You are going to get a much better product. That's what you want to do. Unfortunately, the industry is still in a state where the majority of time, that actually doesn't happen. Now, a lot of the larger software development companies, that's precisely what they do. They include users from the very beginning of the design cycle throughout the entire product development cycle. But particularly at some of the smaller software houses or even in areas where you are developing custom interfaces for, let's say, government right, or healthcare. A lot of times you have a small team. What do you do? You talk to the user. You go, you develop something. Right? You design, you develop, you come up with a prototype, you test it out, it seems to work, you have an interface, now you show it to them. Here's our beta. Give me feedback. Is there something missing in between? Well, the alpha, yes. Before you get to the alpha, something missing in between and what I just described. Did you talk to your users from the time you initially started the project till you had your alpha or your beta? A lot of times the answer is no, and that's a problem. Why do you think that's a problem? How about the flexibility of your design? When is it most flexible? At the beginning of the cycle. At the beginning of the cycle. That's when you start brainstorming and you start dumping ideas and see what the group can come up with. Right, you start brainstorming, you come up with ideas, see what the group can come up with. Come up, you want to come up with a great innovative design, innovative solution. And if your users go and they tell you this won't work, it's a lot easier to change than after you've already been spending months of coding, or in some cases, years of coding. If you have a million lines of code, how easy is it going to be to change something in that code? Yeah, not so much. So you want to make sure that you involve them from the beginning, and you continuously involve them. Yes? Uh, that makes sense. but. Uh... Is there any point where you go, um, how early is too early? Like, uh, if you get too much feedback, how do you know what's good feedback, what's bad, and how to sort it out? That's actually a really good question. Because something else that sometimes happens is that people get so involved with their users that they let the users design the product. Right. And you ignore your own expertise. And that's also a mistake. So typically what you want to do is you want to provide some parameters and very specific questions that you want to ask your users. In the beginning when you're brainstorming, you can ask more open-ended questions, but as you're developing your design, you want to have more specific questions. So later in the semester, for example, we're going to talk about um, how to use various research techniques, such some, things like focus groups. Right, how do you go to a focus group and get good information as opposed to bad information? Because focus groups kind of get a bad rap about that, because you can get a lot of bad information if you don't do it right. So you do have to use your own uh, experience and your own filter. And you do need to try to keep things as simple as possible for your users. So it may be that you just develop, a, you know, based, based on what you get from your users, you develop a mock-up, an interactive mock-up, a prototype that they can use and get feedback from, do some testing on that. And the other thing that people sometimes make a mistake on is they'll talk to one person who's very, very passionate. Right? They want things their way, and they're so passionate that they, they make a big influence on the design. Except the problem is that's an N of one. That's one person. You need to gather information from more people. 
because you aren't designing for that one person, usually. You're designing for a whole group of users. So you want to have them involved. You don't want to let them take over. And you do need to use your own experience. And some of the things that we even have already learned about how we as humans work is you're always going to find the exception. Does that help at all? Now, one of the things that I always want you to remember that I'm going to remind you, I think I've said this a couple times, is that when we are designing a product, do you think the user cares about what's going on behind the scenes? No. To them, the face of that product is the product. They don't care about how hard it was to code. Right? They don't, you know, they don't care about how long it took you. They want that product to do what they need to do. To them, it's a black box. It's magic. Yes. We are magicians. We are magic makers. Right? How many of you have dealt with someone where they have a computer problem and they, they call you because you're the IT expert, right? OK, it doesn't work. Go fix it. <laughs> always. Yeah, and they always say that. Say exactly the same way. I'll even get some email from students. You know, I was taking this quiz online and it didn't work. Can you fix it? Yes, because I'm a mind reader and I'm psychic and I know exactly what happened when you were taking that quiz. But this is typical. So you need to remember that that's how users approach this. We approach it very differently because we know technology is really cool. We want to know what's going on back there. Now, there are a number of axioms I want to bring up. This is from your supplemental text. Students kind of look at axioms and you're like, oh god, do I have to memorize this? If it's in my slides, you need to understand it, at least. But you'll actually find that they do make sense. Stafford is very, very uh, excited about his uh, axioms. One, the system should treat all user input as sacred. Who agrees? At least as close as possible. How many of you would be happy if you went to a banking system and you put, put say you put a deposit for $300 and you looked at, at uh, your, your receipt and it says $30? Oh, yeah, not good. That actually happened to me once, by the way. Yeah, I was not happy. I want it to be sacred because what I want is the most important thing. Right? Of course it is. A computer shall not harm your work or through inaction allow your work to come to harm. How many of you have been writing a paper? A big paper It's taking you all semester. It's due the next morning. Your hard drive crashes. File gets corrupt. Or your operating system crashes. And you were working so diligently on it you forgot to save or back up. I know this has not happened to any of you because you always back up, right? Of course. Well, now we have this feature called autosave. Why do you think that came up? Because people will be focused on what they're doing and they don't save. And then they don't back up. A computer shall not waste your time or require you to do more work than is strictly necessary. Who agrees with that one? Yeah, I'm going to see who's impatient like me. Wait, this is taking 10 seconds to load? Oh, man, that's too long. I've got to find another web page. What's wrong with you? Users are very impatient. That's the longest 10 seconds that they will ever experience. So you want to make sure that you do things as quickly as possible. If that's not possible, you want to do things to distract our users. Well, ads are ads on YouTube, although it can be a little irritating. Right? But what about when you're, I, th I think I talk about this in a, actually a later slide. You know when you're playing solitaire on your computer? When you're in between games, what do you hear? You hear the card shuffling, right? Yeah. That really distracts us. It's normal. We don't even notice. We don't realize we're having to wait as it generates a new game. Right? That's using part of how we work as humans and part of the design. I didn't even notice. Who noticed that even before I told you? One person, two people. Right? I actually didn't notice it until I read it. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. 
Users should set the pace of an interaction. Now, we've talked about how, you know, we don't want things that are too slow. Can things be too fast? They actually can. Here's an error message. Boop, I'm gone. I know you don't want to read me. Wait, what did that say? Is that good? Not so much. What about, um, here's my favorite annoyance when it comes to something like this. You are online banking, or actually, no, even better, PantherSoft. Right? You're using PantherSoft. You're doing, yeah, it logs you off. Why? Because I think you're not doing, doing anything in the last 10 minutes. I don't know. 20 minutes. I'm logging you off. Bye. Yep. And you are using it, but the system doesn't realize that. That happens to me all the time. So yeah, one of the things I tend to do when it comes to uh, when it comes to the exams is I actually pull up PantherSoft where I have pictures of usually almost everyone. And then I kind of stand up here and I'm kind of seeing who's here. Making sure that you are taking your test and it's not someone else. And then what happens 20 minutes into the class? Crap. It logs me off. It is a security measure. So now you're talking about safety, right? So how do you balance out the safety versus convenience? It does prompt you, and that's a good thing. Who knows what the problem with the prompt is? Yeah, if you're on another tab, you're going between tabs, you don't see it. And sometimes even then, if you click it, it still kicks your behind out. So as you can see, there are positives and negatives to everything. Trying to find the best solution isn't always easy. All right, so Raskin claims that it, an interface is humane if it is responsive to human needs and considerate of human frailties. Right? A computer should neither keep the user waiting unnecessarily, nor should it hurry the user. So it's really, what is it that the user needs and what does the user want? Keeping in mind that even things such as safety when you're talking about timing out, we also, as users, want our data to be safe. That's still part of it.